Oh my gosh, it's time again. It sneaks up on me every day. Welcome back uh, to Perfect Tips and Tricks with OESD. Uh, this is uh, Carrie here at, there I am. <laughs> this is Carrie. I forgot who I was for a second. Um, Carrie with OESD, uh, Perfect Tips and Tricks, number 12. Believe it or not, we are already uh, well into our uh I can't believe we're past number 10 already. We should have had a party or a cake or something for number 10, but here we are, number 12. Um, we are back for part two of Quilting in the Hoop with Tamara Evans. Um, I'm gonna bring up Tamara in just a second, but if any of you have any questions uh, from yesterday, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you thought of something in the night of what you wanted to ask Tamara, um, she is always happy to take your questions, um, but, Let's go right into it with uh, 102 with Tamara. Tamara, let's bring you up here. I uh, have lost you somehow. Hang on. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> I do hear you. We see you. I'm here. Help me. We see you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. I thought. I'm always that person. You're the person with your, your phone. Uh, yes, on. I'm just turning it off. All right, let's see if I can. I bet you this is it. Hang on, folks. There she is, Tamara. We hey, did it. You found me. <laughs> we did it. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Oh. Go for it, Tamara. Let's do 102. 102. Well, quilting designs are one of my favorite things. I like them because they're fast to stitch and one color. Um, so, those of us who don't have a multi-needle machine and can do that automatically, quilting designs do a lot for us besides just quilting. Um, quilting in the hoop is great and hooping your quilt and all that's easy, but let's kind of take it a different direction today. Um, first of all, let me show you some samples and some other things you can do with your quilting designs. Um, how about on a dish towel like this one? Doing it across the bottom, it makes a nice little border. This one even has some quilting designs at the top with bumblebees in them and buttonholes. So you can make a nice dish towel. How about an apron made out of a dish towel with a nice uh, quilted border along the bottom? Now that you know how to line up those designs, doing continuous borders is a really easy thing to do. The hem of a dress or a shirt, they work perfectly. Another thing that they can do is reverse applique. So here's my little quilting design. Can you set? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Uh, quilting design. So on the t-shirt, I did the three ply or the three, the bean stitch, the triple straight stitch, and then had fabric behind it and cut it away. And you have a really quick and easy applique. And because it's knit, it's not going to ravel at all. So really fun and cute. And I did, um, color his little eyes in uh, with black uh, permanent marker so that, and his nose, so it would look like that. But um, do you get the pun here? Do you see the fabric? Ah, uh, it's houndstooth. Uh-huh, isn't that uh -huh. fun? Ah, uh -huh. Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So um, that's fun, but another thing you can do with quilting designs, and on this one, you would want to use the straight stitch uh, the single run stitch. How about some couching? You like my little hedgehog? Isn't He's he cute? cute? Or porcupine. I'm not sure which. Um, pretty designs. These are some of Amanda Murphy's designs. And I played around with them um, with uh, stitch length and stuff. And I think a, a shorter stitch length, you get a better point um, if you have software and you want to adjust those things, which is very easy. And then you just feed the yarn through on the back and it stays in place. And I think that would be lovely on a quilt or even a garment. Um, do you use a couching foot for that, Tamara? How do you, or maybe I'm, I'm stealing what you're going to yeah. tell us later. <laughs> I am going to tell you how to do it in just a minute. Oops, okay, cool. I dropped one. So then I did another puppy dog. Isn't he cute? I just love this little dog. Um, and I'll tell you what collection it's from in a few minutes. And how about a bear? Now this one, let's see if I can get it in there. Yep, got it. Uh, yeah, so this one is reverse applique and couching. 
So I wanted a little bit different finish on it. So I decided to do both. I was getting a little carried away. And then I thought this little puppy dog was cute too. So I put him with couching on another t-shirt. He is cute. So you want to see how it's done? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say yes for everyone out in the crowd because they're okay. all saying yes out there, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I will switch to my screen real quick here. Oh, share and from beginning. So we'll do reverse applique first. Um, it's so, so simple. Um, and there's lots of ways to um, use it, not just on a t-shirt. You could put it, um, although t-shirt works really well and it's really fast, but you could put it on lots of things. What you want to look for in a design is a closed design. So you'll notice, even though the puppy here isn't completely closed, you know, up at his neck, it's closed enough that it's not going to ravel. Um, but the triple straight stitch works the best, especially if you accidentally clip too close. Um, because it's gone over three times, it holds its, its place. So here's a little puppy dog, a close up of him. I need to touch up his eyes, I think. Um, so he's so cute. Um, you want to avoid open designs um, and single straight stitch designs. Like the birds here, you know, it would be hard to figure out exactly where to cut that out. You, you might could do it, but it would look a little awkward. And the fox is kind of rolled up on himself. And when you think you've got the right spot, it's not. So, you know, draw your finger through the open area of a design and see where you end up. Uh, follow it around like a maze and you can see how successful that design will be. So what do you, what you want to do first is apply fusible woven to the back of the fabric. Uh, fusible woven is a fabric prep. It's a permanent fuse. We just want to give that fabric a little bit more, uh, stability, make it a, a better fabric, if you will, add thread count to it. Then find a t-shirt with a hole in it. <laughs> Actually, it's a great thing to do if you get a t-shirt with a hole in it. Um, you want to turn the t-shirt inside out and mark the center front with a chalk marker or, or whatever your favorite marking tool is. Then you're going to center the fabric over that marked line. And you want to make sure it's big enough for your design. So this was more than enough uh, for the there, I think is what I'm doing on this one. Um, it was more than enough for it. So we just center it over that marked line. Now, normally with a t-shirt, we would use, I would use a fusible poly mesh uh, because I want it to not stretch once um, I need to have a stable place for the stitches to go so they won't get stretched and broken. Um, and the fabric won't move on me while I'm stitching. So instead of putting it right next to the t-shirt, we put it over the fabric on the back. So you, if you can see, there's kind of a little white shadow going all the way around that. That is the fusible poly mesh covering the fabric. Um, and you put the fabric right side down, then put the fusible poly mesh over it, big enough so that it can be hooped and also bigger than your square of fabric. Then you turn the t-shirt right side out, hoop it, and stitch the design. Looks like this bear got shot, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so we uh, stitch our, our design. Here's a triple straight stitch on this one. Then we take our scissors and very carefully cut out the fabric on the inside there. Um, it's easy with a knit, even without a hole in it, to just pull it up and, and start trimming because um, it separates from that fabric. And there you have your bear. Now, one thing with the white t-shirt is that shows through. So I would go back and trim, which I did. I trimmed away um, around the edge of that uh, in the back so that it wouldn't uh, show through the fabric like that or use a darker t-shirt. Um, I still would trim it away, you know, to about a quarter of an inch anyway, but you can trim it a little bit closer if, uh, you don't want it to show. So how simple is that? Very simple. Okay, so let's move on to couching with a quilting design. 
Now, we talked about using a triple run stitch with the applique, reverse applique. But with couching, we want to use a single run. Um, Couching can be done in lots and lots of ways. I do recommend a couching foot. I think most machine models out there have one um, you can purchase. You can uh, try if you don't have one, although I highly recommend it, um, your embroidery foot, but you've got to be real careful with how your yarn feeds through the hole there. Um, but couching is a very fun and you can use all those fun yarns you have scraps of or you buy because you thought you were going to knit and you don't. Um, so here's uh, that Amanda Murphy design I showed you earlier. This is from uh, collection volume nine of her long arm collection, which also comes in embroidery formats and they're all single run stitches. So it's perfect for couching. So here I've done some couching and this one has a longer stitch length and you can see in the picture, um, at the points, some of them, you see a, a piece of thread up there. So you could avoid that if you wanted to use a monofilament thread or change your stitch length. You also see in the center there where it didn't quite pick up that point. Um, you can see the black thread under it. But if you change your, like that, but if you change to a shorter stitch length, you avoid that. So if you have software, you just change your run stitch to, you know, a two and a half instead of a 3.3 .3 or whatever the design comes in at. Um, it will shorten them around the curves where it needs to automatically, um, but just your overall stitch length is narrower. It, I mean, it's shorter. It works a little better. So here is, um, hmm, I'm not sure why this is in there. I you just liked that. it? Yeah, I liked it. I thought that would be fun to do. Um, <laughs> okay. So here's a uh, good and bad yarn choices. This is a, a little monster from animals quilting. No, I think it's kids quilting. Um, you notice with the larger yarn, it kind of missed over on the monsters. It would be his left eye. Um, didn't cover quite as well. So think about that too with that yarn and experiment with different ones. Uh, the green yarn on your right uh, worked much better. Um, a tight weave is good. Um, just just play with different different types of yarn and experiment. Here's my little puppy dog. So you're going to thread the couching foot. It has a little hole on the side that you put the yarn through and then it goes down through the center of the foot. There is also a um, holder on this particular one. You may have a support for the yarn that attaches to the side of the machine. If you don't uh, use a, uh, what am I trying to, a thread stand um, or hold it up very loosely and let it slide through your fingers so that it's up out of the way and it's feeding through evenly. So pull some yarn out to start and then just start slowly stitching. And I would recommend a slow stitch with this. Usually I'm, you know, pedal to the metal, but on this type of thing, I really do slow down uh, quite a bit. So I make sure the yarn doesn't kink. And then when you're done, you can pull the tails to the back with an upholstery needle. Um, or I made a little tail for my bear. I braided it, a, you know, wrapped it around, made a few knots. <laughs> it was cute. Um, and there you go. This shows you where I've trimmed away that excess fabric from the back um, of the design so that it doesn't show through on the front, uh, the fabric. Now you don't see it. You just see my yellow chalk marks. Okay, so here are some fun, whoops, some fun things that, I'm sorry, my mouse is going crazy on me. I'll use the keyboard instead. Here, I loved these pictures. <laughs> You're possessed. My mouse is possessed. Um, these pictures, these um, Carrie shared with me from Red Roxy and they have taken quilting designs and I'm going to assume these look like they're triple straight stitch. I would recommend that and have stitched all of these um, designs onto a quilt and 
you can tell in some of them where they've got two different colors of fabric showing through that they've layered multiple layers under there, which you certainly can do. And I thought they just turned out gorgeous. Um, in fact, I stitched one, but I don't know where he went. Um, must still be in the sewing room. Oh, well. Um, on some, well, anyway, I did one too. Um, and just get your little snips. I really recommend the micro the micro snips with the serrated edge. You can get in those corners really uh, close and trim and it works perfectly. So um, have fun with that. Thanks for sharing with us, Red Roxy people. Yep, so that I'll give credit real quick to Roxanne at Red Roxy. They're in Iowa and they are a wonderful uh, retail partner of ours. And she teaches a class in this and and exactly what you said they'll they layer three uh fabrics together so it'll be the top color so in that in that case of the purple and teal quilt it would be the purple fabric and then a turquoise fabric and then a yellow fabric and then when they they quilt the design and then they selectively choose what they trim away to reveal that color underneath and then put it into a project and it's just such a neat technique you wouldn't think to do that with a quilting design. But again, uh, shout out to Red Roxy uh, in uh, Iowa. Um, Jess and, and Roxanne are amazing, wonderful retail partners of other, of ours. So thank you for sharing. They are so cute. And I, I just think that looks like such a fun thing to do. Stitch up a bunch of those and binge watch on Netflix and- Trim away. Okay. Trim away, yes. Um, here's another thing you can do. Um, these came courtesy of Kelly Rushing, one of our other educators. She put uh, quilting designs around the hem of a couple of dresses. This one is called Trellis Quilting. And she um, used the same type of uh, technique that we, we talked about yesterday with the templates. And you just lay it out and you figure out how many repetitions you can get. So you you can get kind of close then either on the side or in the back in an unobtrusive place. You can make the other one a little bit narrower so it'll fit in there right. And it comes out just perfect. It just adds a little something to, to a, a, a simple but elegant lines on that dress. I really like that. Not my size though. Oh, and here's another one. Um, this one, the design is Blackberry Bramble, which, you know, to me, that doesn't look like a quilting design. It just looks like a decorative stitch on um, fabric. And you could use, um, I'm not sure what stabilizer she used on this. I should have asked her. Yeah, Kelly, if uh, you're out there in the background, I see you. Tell us what stabilizer you used on this project. She'll tell us. I'll, I'll let you know, Tara. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so stabilizers that we use today, um, fusible poly mesh cutaway. We use that to fuse down the fabric that has fusible woven, which I forgot to make a slide for. Um, you put fusible woven on the back and then put the poly mesh over to hold it in place for your reverse applique because you want that fabric uh, that you're going to reveal right next to the fabric that you're stitching on the top of. Ultra clean and tear, Tamara. Kelly ultra says she used tear. ultra clean and tear. Perfect. That's what I would have used too. She's so smart. Um, so fusible poly mesh cutaway, ultra clean and tear fusible um, happens to be our next slide. And I use that on some of the catching designs that were not um, on a knit. So just like her linen dresses there, that would work perfect. And you can iron it on and hoop it and you are good to go. And the nice thing about that too, is if you, once you launder that, the rest of the stabilizer, it, it doesn't dissolve, but it disintegrates, it falls apart. And the fibers, you know, the fibers that are left in there just kind of go down the drain in the wash. And, and so you're left with a clean finish. Um, once it's been washed a couple of times, once or twice. Other things we used, animals quilting. Um, so that had the little uh, puppy dogs on it and um, our Urban Elements design. The nice thing about all the Urban Elements collections is they come in single stitch and triple stitch. So you can do both, um, you know, the dog and the catching with the dog um, because you've got both varieties of designs there. Then woodland quilting, you saw the cabin earlier. It has a lot of fun stuff in it, cabins and moose and um, 
pine trees. It's really a fun design, kind of, you know, more masculine. I can see that with some, you know, plaid flannel. That would be so cute. Um, this has 68 designs. They are single and triple. So what you get actually, and I wanted to point this out. So when you're looking at um, them, you know, online, you can see 68 total designs. So you have 34, see, I did math, uh, unique designs because they are one in triple stitch and one in a single stitch. So 34 unique designs done two ways, if that makes sense. And then um, you didn't get to see that because I dropped it somewhere between here and my sewing room. I used elegant line quilting uh, to do a block similar. I only used one fabric on mine, similar to what the gals from Red Roxy did. They were so cute on the, um, on the fabric. And that's all I've got. Any questions? Uh, no, we have a question um, from someone who wanted to know what CD Red Roxy used. And I don't have that answer handy, but um, we'll get that answer uh, for you, Deborah. So sorry that I don't have the answer. <laughs> I'd like to know that too. Let me go back Absolutely. And see if we should. Yeah, it. if you can identify it by yeah. sight, that would be impressive. Yeah. That would no, be. I. Um, Oops. Get we'll get that answer for you. Yeah, it's very pretty. I mean, you know, even like a red work medallion, I think would work on that. Um, you know, yeah, where you've got really a, some, some heavier stitching. Really yep. pretty. Yep. Well, thank you, Tamara, for, for doing uh, that with us today. It's always a pleasure to, to chat with you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. I've enjoyed it very much. Y'all have so fun, fun and um, stay safe. And you too. Enjoy your stitching. Thank you. All right. So that was fantastic. Thank you again to Tamara. Um, so that's quilting in the hoop in a uh, in a basket. I won't call it a nutshell because there was a, a little more information that wouldn't fit in a nutshell. But um, if you didn't watch yesterday's episode, definitely check it out on our YouTube channel or in our uh, on our Facebook page. You can view all of the past videos by going to our OESD Facebook page and then on the side of the screen you'll see videos and you can see them all there so um every weekday 1 p.m central time we are here uh doing our our perfect tips and tricks tomorrow i'm very excited i cannot believe it's friday again um but we're whipping through the weeks um tomorrow i am going to start something i'm really excited about so we're gonna do next week our very first embroider along. So we're going to do a project together. So I hope that that's something you guys are excited about. I'm going to give you a really quick sneak peek. And those of you who have uh, sharp eyes may see this sneak peek behind me. But um, this is something that we'll be releasing tomorrow um, on Embroidery Online. So this is our freestanding lace basket for all seasons. Um, I'm not going to give you too close of a look. I'm going to put it back here just to tease you. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to introduce that project to you. I'm going to show you how it works and what it does and how awesome and versatile it is. You're going to love this basket. And then um, we're going to talk about supplies that you might need to make the basket. And then next week, we're going to make it together. So I'll spread it out throughout the week and we'll make the, the basket structures together. We'll talk about what stabilizer you need and, and how to get perfect result. And then we'll talk about assembly and we'll talk about doodads and we'll talk about the ribbon. And so that's what we're going to do next week. Um, peppered in there, we will also have um, Monday. I'm looking at my schedule here. I can't quite remember. We're going to talk uh, to one of our fabulous artists about the process of creating an embroidery collection. Uh, we have a project in the hoop with Kelly on Wednesday. So we have a awesome schedule lined up for you next week, um, including our um, embroider along that will kick off tomorrow on Friday. So mark your calendars for 1 p.m. Central Time here on the Perfect Tips and Tricks. Uh, I'm really excited to do this uh, project with you guys starting tomorrow. So thank you. Get ready. You're going to love it. Uh, happy stitching and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.